Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richie. Good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day with me, none other than Francesca, who is host of the Twituation Room. Always <laughs> a fascinating <laughs> breakdown. All right. Top story of the day Joe Biden, current president of the United States. Well, looks like he had classified documents as well. Looks as if Republicans are really upset about the fact that Joe Biden was in receipt of classified documents, at least according to the current narrative. Let's dig into it. Aides to President Joe Biden have discovered at least one additional batch of classified information. So there was one batch, now there's two. In a location separate from the Washington office he used after leaving the Obama administration. According to a person familiar with the matter, two sources have said that less than a dozen documents with classified information or classified markings were found at the office. The archives referred the matter to the Department of Justice. Okay, this is what you call a normative protocol. If they are discovered, you do not engage in cover up. You do not try to eliminate the chain of custody. You do not try to engage a criminal activity to protect one man, even if that man happens to be the current president of the United States. Now let's provide context to the number of documents. According to the reports we have now, they are not obviously as numerous as Donald Trump and the allegations against him. So if you believe that Joe Biden should face the music, because 12 documents, maybe they find more later. But if you believe he should face the music for having in his possession at one time classified information outside of the protocol of the United States government and their processes for declassification, you must have already concluded that Donald Trump needs to go to prison for the crimes that he committed as it relates to having classified documents. There's more nuance and more detail. That must be explored. So since November, since the month of November, after the discovery of documents with classified markings from his former office, Biden aides have been searching for any additional classified information that might be in other locations he used, said a source who spoke on the condition of anonymity to provide details about the ongoing inquiry. The White House did not reply to a request for comment, not immediately. The Department of Justice had no comment. So now the White House has commented and basically they're saying, well, it's ongoing. There was no cover up, I'm paraphrasing, but they provided no meat on the bone, okay? There's more, the initial discovery of classified information in an office used by Biden after his vice presidency was first reported on Monday by CBS News. The classification level number and precise location of the additional documents was not made immediately clear. It was also not immediately clear when the additional documents were discovered. And if the search for any other classified materials Biden may have from the administration former, being Obama administration is complete. Biden aides have been sifting through the documents at locations, stored at locations beyond his former Washington office to determine if there are any other classified documents that may need to be turned over to the National Archives and reviewed by the Justice Department, the person close to the source and the information said. Biden's lawyers followed proper protocol by first notifying the archives with the first batch of classified documents. They did not notify Biden first, they notified the archives. The person said, but because the Justice Department got involved in the president's lawyers, were then in touch with them. The second, in the second instance, the lawyer simply went directly to the Department of Justice. But the key questions remain unanswered about the stash of classified material, including who brought them to Biden's private homes and what specifically was contained in them. Now, I want to remind everyone there are multiple federal statutes that deal with the handling of classified information. Typically, it requires mens rea or intent for a criminal act. You can be negligent and grossly negligent to the degree that you can be charged with a crime. But you can also be forgiven of it 
if it was done as an accident. An accident that's not gross or grossly negligent, that is possible. It is also possible based on the reporting that we've heard so far that Biden staff members may have inadvertently done so. Well, you find that out through investigation. The bottom line is the investigation should not stop just because Biden is president of the United States. I will lack intellectual integrity if I submit it to you that somehow this should not be an ongoing investigation because it happened to Biden. Not at all, it should. There should be an investigation, it should be thorough, it should be accurate, and it should be transparent. And damn it, if Biden did something illegal, he should face the music, period. There's no ambiguity with that with me. If Donald Trump did something illegal, he should face the music too. Now, let me remind you of the Trump situation. The New York Times called and cited a person briefed on the matter as saying the material is from what the government calls special access programs. This is what Trump is alleged of stealing, which relate to extremely sensitive operations. According to the Washington Post, an unnamed source said the material dealt with nuclear programs. On Friday morning, Trump denied he had such classified material. That's what happened with Trump. Trump said, no, 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 I never even had classified material. Then all of a sudden, we see truckloads of it. He said, no, I didn't have classified material. But then the archive said, give us back the classified material. He did eventually comply, but it was partial. They came back and said, can you give us the classified material? Then they mandated, give us the classified material. Trump still decided not to comply with the mandate from the federal government. These are very different actions. There's a narrative that Donald Trump himself took the classified documents, not a staff member by accident. Once again, a different contextualization. Beyond that, a special access program is a really different type of specialized program. It is so classified that typically it is outside of the normative hierarchy of classification. You do have to possess top secret clearance, but beyond top secret clearance, these programs typically exist in silos. Now I can argue why these particular programs may be harmful to America. I can also argue why all of this secrecy is not even needed, at least to the degree that the CIA and others would like you to believe that it's needed. But the reality is Donald Trump is not accused of simply taking 12 documents or 15 documents from the White House. He's accused of taking maybe thousands of classified documents and they connect to programs so highly classified that even the CIA director or the DNI director cannot gain access to these programs without proper prerequisite approval. That's your difference. All right, this is the thoughts here. Yeah, I mean, the difference is there was a raid on Mar-a-Lago. This Department of Justice decided to do that. I mean, anyone who thinks that this Department of Justice is overly partisan <laughs> is not living in our reality, which is that Merrick Garland goes above and beyond to make sure that he does not appear at all like he might be a little partisan. I mean, to, to, for them to raid Mar-a-Lago, you know it had to deal with something big. And from what we know of Donald Trump, um, if he could do it, he probably did it. If he could try and barter and sell nuclear codes, he probably did it or nuclear information. Not sure if the actual codes were there. Um, you know, that, that might have been a little too much. But look, it, this is red meat for the right. We all know what's gonna happen. We know what they're saying already. We know what Donald Trump is saying. He's tr drawing a false equivalence between these two things when there are none. The difference to me is that piece that you talked about, Dr. Ritchie, is that it is the intent. In the case of Donald Trump, they willingly took documents and then intended to conceal them from the DOJ and the National Archives. They were like, no, 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 you can have these. Okay, fine, you'll have a little bit more. Okay, uh, ooh, fine, you'll have to raid me for the rest. Biden's team finds these old documents, pre him being in the White House documents, right? Old documents and they're like, they tell on themselves, which is generally what you should do. You should say, hey, guess what? I found these documents, I didn't know they were there. I'm telling on myself to the National Archives, to the DOJ, then there's an investigation. The same thing happens, I'm sorry to draw this parallel, with any kind of Me Too or sexual assault allegations. When, Demo when they involve Democrats, they talk about it, they speak up about it. You got Matt Schlapp of CPAC currently under invest, not even under investigation, alleged to have groped a staffer. What do Republicans do? They don't admit it. 
They just don't know, because it's okay when they do it. It's okay when they do it, they are utter hypocrites and they relish in being hypocrites. But as you pointed out, we have higher standards. Yeah, everything is going as it should go when there's an actual hierarchy and not people who believe they're in a cult. Right. All right, very sad story, a veteran. A black, black male veteran says he was wrongly arrested, accosted by the police, snatched out of his car. Here's a video. Turn the car off, turn it off. Turn it off. Jams out the window. Put your hands out the window. I am moving. What's up? Oh, can you unlock it? Huh? Bridge my desk. Man, just Don't worry about it. You keep your freaking hands out the window and shut your mouth. I'll figure it out. Yeah. He's riding. What's up? What's going on? What's up? How you doing? What is going on? Come on, unlock. You gonna unlock me? I'm I'm trying. What's up? I'm chilling, what's up? I am chilling, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. Look at me, I'm doing that, what's up? Come on, man, he resisting, y'all wildin', come on, y'all wildin'. I ain't doing that, now. come on. Okay. Oh, hey. What I did? I'm going to stop. Hey. What you mean? I got pull up in the same spot. I actually have more video. What you're looking at is a disabled veteran in Jacksonville, Florida, being handled by the police in that manner. Here's more video. What makes this spot safer for you than the, where I tried to stop? You? I mean, y'all hit the lights on. I ain't want to pull in the middle of the road. That's dangerous for y'all. I didn't want to pull in a well lit area. You get y'all out of traffic. Okay. I ain't stupid. So, do you think that making a safe spot for us is is a uh, is something that you're authorized to do? I mean, I don't. I ain't think it requires authorization. I'm trying to be safe, just like y'all. I, I ain't posting uh -huh. a threat. I send y'all something. Wait, at so the are store. you trying to be safe? You're trying to find a safe spot for you or for me? For both of us. No, you don't get to do that. Okay, that's understandable. You can I make apologize. a claim that you're trying to make a safe spot for you. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right. Why is this spot safer than that spot? It's, it's a well lit area. I mean, it's not in the middle of the road. Do you see all those? Do you see all those uh, street lights down there? I understand what you're saying. So but why is this spot? more well lit than down there. I mean, what was so detrimental between me stopping right there and stopping right here? I, 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 well, actually, I I'd like to ask you that. Why did you keep driving? I have no, I just told you that. Mm -hmm. I just told you that. Why There's would a I lot want of stop movement moving, moving around in that car. You just looked in it. There's a lot of moving around whenever when? uh, Whenever I have my lights I on. I rode you. the windows down, put my job license, my registration mm -hmm. out the window. That's what I was supposed to ask when y'all first pushed my right over, right? Y'all ain't do none of that. Come on, I'm not posting a federal law by a citizen. Shut your mouth. It's a damn shame. The man was simply driving a few feet ahead so that he could be in a well lit area. Something by the way, he is authorized to do. It is reasonable to go to a well lit area. Judges have interpreted the law to say that's fine. There's no problem with that. That's not fleeing a cop. Let's put up the picture of Mr. Braxton Smith. Mr. Smith. Is a black US Navy veteran. It's calling for all of the officers involved to be held accountable. He has filed a formal complaint with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. He said, and I quote, it made me feel humiliated. Someone like myself, I'm a veteran. I went to college, I've done things to shield myself from this type of stigma, but it still managed to follow me, he told News 4 JAX. Smith told reporters he had an injured back from several deployments while serving in the Navy. Mm -hmm. He had to go to the hospital to get a pain injection after the rough encounter with the police. Let me give you background on this traffic stop. Smith said he was smoking a cigarette outside of a gas station the day before Thanksgiving and saw Jacksonville Sheriff's Office task force members circling the store. As soon as he exited the gas station, Police flashed their lights to pull the man over. However, Smith didn't come to an immediate stop. Instead, he slowed down, 
hoping to find a well lit area that wasn't in the middle of the road out of fear, he said. Smith recorded some of the interaction with the cell phone and the sheriff's office released the body cam footage of the incident. The officers accused Smith of smoking hemp <laughs> and scanned his clothes and car for drugs or anything illegal. They also said the man's vehicle smelled like marijuana and asked if he had a medical marijuana card. The officers ran his name and their system to see if he was a convicted felon. However, the veteran said they had no reason to stop him. However, he never gives Smith a citation. At one point, officers find a firearm in his trunk and they debate whether or not he was reaching for it or trying to hide it while they trailed him on the street. However, Smith explains that he legally possesses the holster gun. When the officers find nothing, they eventually let Mr. Smith go. First, Coast News identified the officer behind the camera as Justin Peppers. Further incidents involving that cop, Mr. Peppers, according to First Coast News, a couple filed a restraining order against Officer Peppers, accusing him of harassing and stalking after he repeatedly served them tickets for an illegal tent. However, a local judge later dissolved the order. During one of the traffic stops, Officer Peppers reportedly detained a passerby who refused to back up her vehicle and reroute. Officer Peppers pulled the woman from the car, handcuffed her and detained this passerby for about an hour. Put a, a picture of the sheriff. Damn shame, Sheriff. Sheriff T.K. Waters runs the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office told News 4 JAX that it has been made aware of the traffic stop by way of a formal complaint by Mr. Smith. The incident is currently being administratively reviewed. And once that has been completed, the outcome would be made public record, according to the sheriff's office. Now, what do you see there? Obviously, uh, the officer could have engaged in de-escalation. He could have simply not been a jerk, possibly even just told the truth and say, hey, you know, you look suspicious to us. We just wanted to check it out. But instead of that, pushed it. He wanted to find something criminal. He wanted to make it criminal to do what you have the right to do, which is to find a well lit area. That's okay, it's not a problem. He wanted it to be an issue that the man was moving around. Somehow that's illegal now that you're moving around in your vehicle or even put him under arrest for what obstruction? Everything he told you was true. This is a normal mm -hmm. traffic stop for a black male. Mm -hmm. I've been in that situation. Plenty of times, argument, ego, back and forth, wanted to find something to arrest me simply because I would not kiss their ass. It happens. All right. Yeah, Thoughts? no, uh, no, agreed. And and listen to the way the officer trying to, he's tongue tying himself, just trying to find a reason to, yep. so you think it's your authority for you to not stop immediately. Trying to find a reason, like none of that is illegal. But but keep talking, homie. Keep keep spinning your little web of lies, trying to like and and the, and the veterans like, what do you do? What do you mean? Yeah. For, I'm just trying to be safe for us, and specifically as we've seen these traffic stops go a different way. And this is not the first story you have done. We have done about uh, someone driving to a well lit area. It's because they are afraid, not just of getting hit by an oncoming car. They're afraid of the police, and man, they should be because of the ways that we've seen these body cam footage play out in other fashions. The last thing I'm gonna say is reaching for your gun in your trunk. I'm sorry, like yeah. what is racism so great that people are like, that white cops are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, black Americans have um, go go gadget arms and they can reach <laughs> into their trunk and so just grab sick. their gun. Like just come on, I'm so glad he was let go finally, but but he should have never been in that situation in the first That's place. Right. That's right, all right, they we shouldn't have put him there. Yeah. That's right. We we will bring you updates because obviously this is going to be, you know, a continuation. All right. We have an indisputable exclusive. No other news agency has this story. A woman who has cancer. She's taken a test 
And according to the proctor or the protocol and proctor, she cheated. And so they failed her. But there's another side of this story. Let me take you first to the video. Here it is. You can see my camera does not pick up certain things. And if I was just sitting back and I was typing, it's gonna seem like I'm on another device, even though I'm on a wireless keyboard. So you can see that. Um, also, my camera, it doesn't rotate past there. For me to look down, I'll hold it up higher because this can't catch it. I have to look down to type. So people automatically assume that because I'm looking down, I'm cheating. Or if I hold it like this and I'm typing that I have to be cheating. It's just, it's so wrong and disrespectful on so many levels. And the email that I got from Timothy CV saying you were cheating, it's just like, you're an educated grown man. How hard is it to ask this question? How hard is it for you to ask me to provide documentation? It seemed like it was easier to dismiss me from the program than it was to ask a question of commonality or common sense. I agree with her. Let's put up the picture full mass here. As a college professor, I'm familiar with many of these programs. During COVID, we had to get trained on a lot of them because everything went virtual. Even when I took my test, my LSAT to get into law school, it was through a program very similar because the LSAT organizers refused to allow for in-person test taking. So you have a camera in front of you. There's a proctor who's able to watch you while you're testing and it is recorded for review later. All right, now let's keep a picture up. The woman, 38 years of age, her name is Jahan Bajat. You see her with her grandmother and mother. She is categorized as a disabled honor student, studying to be a cardiac electrophysiologist. Was failed in several classes and was dismissed from her program for cheating. She says she was never given a chance to defend herself. The investigation by the university, which is Loma Linda School of Allied Health Professions, did not give her an opportunity to rebut, according to her. 2022 was already a rough year for Jahan. She completed nearly 50 units in the fall at that university and a nearby community college to keep cost of tuition down. She also received a diagnosis for ovarian cancer while her mother is suffering from kidney failure. When her professor Ryan Allen accused the student of cheating after she completed all the semester's work, her world came crashing down. Here's the professor with the student. Also a program director, Allen oversaw the investigation into academic dishonesty, the claim thereof. And it was Ryan Allen who initially received the request for ADA accommodation. Bajat alleges she was denied an opportunity to present her interpretation or her side before the dismissal. That she used a keyboard and text to speech software during her test. She said, and I quote, I'm flabbergasted. They continued to throw me under the bus after I told Ryan Allen about my ADA accommodation. Now remember, ADA accommodations, these, these accommodations are protected by the federal government. They are guaranteed by the federal government once you receive the classification. All right, here are, here's one of the several messages Bajat sent to the school, let's put it up. Requesting ADA accommodation, she also let Professor Allen know she needed the accommodation. In it, it says, hello, I have called and left messages and I didn't get a call back regarding assistance. Her letter of dismissal from the program concealed facts about her test taking accommodations. We got the letter right here. The letter says a lot of things, but it doesn't say anything about the accommodation, okay? Now, just a reminder, it's a wireless keyboard. 
That's what it is. So why this keyboard? There could have been a misinterpretation, yes. Maybe the system misinterpreted what it was. That's why you have a live proctor who either watches in real time or can review after the fact. That's one of the prerequisites to programs like that, all right? Uh, Bajat says no one from the university has responded regarding her request for accommodation. Nor were there any guidelines regarding her use of text to speech aids set out in the student handbook. And listen, this is important because when we were working on this story, I wanted to know all of the pieces of information that could be a prerequisite to her test. What does she sign? What does she read? What does she agree to? What's in the student handbook? So we went through an exhaustive analysis of these things. There's nothing prohibiting what you just saw, nothing. After her dismissal from the program, after she was dismissed, Bajaj says, Allen uh, denied her request for leave of absence. Now Bajaj has requested a grievance hearing. She says the accusation cost her $42,000 in tuition and impacted her future income, career, financial aid, and I quote, letting my mother know I graduated before she passed away. A representative of Loma Linda University reached back to us with a statement. Here's the statement to indisputable. Loma Linda University seeks to educate ethical and competent professionals and scholars committed to the practice of honesty and the pursuit of truth. When allegations of misconduct are made, a thorough inquiry is made to determine if the concerns, allegations are substantive. If the student disagrees with these findings, they can file a grievance through the office of the Dean of School. Their statement continued, if the student contends that the appropriate procedure was not followed, or if there is new evidence relevant to the decision that was not available to the student during the procedure, the student may make an appeal to the university president. All right, put up the president, buck stops with him. That's your president, his name is Richard H. Hart. The student has already filed a grievance in order to be heard. At this point, based on the information that we have received and have been able to review, there has definitely been either A, a miscarriage here, or B, a huge, huge mistake, negligence or otherwise. This should not have happened, all right. Thoughts, yeah, this no, this is great that you guys are covering this story. I mean, this is the kind of thing, you know, that flies under the radar, and that especially students with disabilities yep. um, get constantly. Um, Effectively ignored when when they're legitimately look. I had repetitive strain injury. That's like you know pain in your arms, your hands. I use voice to text. That early stuff, the one it was really bad. People rely on it every single day. I got a weird keyboard. I identify with her. I understand at least on that level, right? Like what it is to not be able to constantly type. That doesn't mean you're cheating. I don't care how many cameras you have on this person, right? Which they, clearly they didn't have enough, um, but. I don't understand why one time, one time you do not, and look again, students with disabilities, people with disabilities, this happens to them all the time. They're like, well, sorry, I don't know, consult the rule book, consult the handbook. I guess we can discriminate against you, right? We can do that. We can call, we can say that you've been cheating and immediately you're out of the program. We don't even give three strikes. We don't even give a warning. There's no, we don't even do an investigation. You're just out of the program. So look, she's got a good case. I, I know she will be reinstated, and I'm I'm so grateful that Indisputable is doing this kind of reporting. You know, and we appreciate you saying that. Um, you can't talk about diversity and inclusion, and not discuss the reality of what happened to this young lady. Right. Uh, and people all across this country and beyond who face this kind of discrimination, this normative and 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 very biased discrimination, because there's an accommodation required. They engage in that accommodation. They are not doing anything to enrich themselves, cheat themselves. They simply want to pass a program, and so they study hard to do so. Well, until we make adjustments to ensure that there's actual fairness in the application, not only of these programs, but how they are interpreted, how these testing programs interpret the test taker in the moment of testing, we will continue to find these realities. So we're gonna to try to stop them, all right?
We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, always good to be with you. Um, we got a special coming up, um, MLK special, all right? This is very important. Uh, it is called, they called him radical, a tribute to King. This is on Tuesday, the 17th of January for our special King tribute. I will host this show. I will bring along my friends, Ricky Smiley, Senator Nina Turner, and also news anchor Sharon Reed will all be with me that day. Would love for you to join as well, all right? Uh, make sure you tune in, tyt.com forward slash live. Also YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Okay, we got a lot of viewer comments, I'll read as many as I can. Uh, not my circus dragon says, I'll make a prediction. The Jacksonville police will determine that their efforts, officers, excuse me, by, uh, behavior was within their training. Not recognizing how that simply proves their training sucks. It's a good point, great point. Uh, Stop Dragon says accommodation for the disabled uh, isn't just the right thing to do, it's the law. And to do otherwise is both disgusting and actionable. That is correct, 100% true, All right? Um, <laughs> James, come on. James Thompson says, I will give you three for five that those docs succeeded. Burning the Kiwi Dragon, I can relate to a point. I am appealing my med school's decision again to discount my last attempt in 2020 at the finals over multiple mitigating circumstances, including my mother's poor health. Um, and listen, I had to go through that in law school. Uh, so when my mother passed away, obviously that's uh, traumatic. And I attempted to power through. I actually went to class, I went to class first day of the semester. One of my law professors came to me and she says, Dr. Richard, why are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? You don't have to do this. You know, acknowledgement of your humanity. That's what this is about. This isn't about rules, laws, policy, protocols. This is really more about us acknowledging the humanity of individuals who may be a little different in one area or another. That's all it is, mm -hmm. that's it. Why is that so difficult for them to understand? It's real simple. All right, got something for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen Wood. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You're my still friend. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. My way, and you're not going to push the card into me. That is assault. So please move. Go get your manager. Go get your manager. Go ahead. Go get him. Go get him. I'm not going to get your manager. I'm not getting him. It's not on me to get him. You're the one stopping me. Here's my receipt. Now you're in Now you're holding me hostage against my will. Yo, can you go get the manager? What in the hell? I got more video. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. It is. You it's cannot good. stop me. You cannot stop me or hold me against my will. That is illegal. You can follow me to my car if you like. Not getting out the store, but Dude, you, you can follow me to my car if you like. Getting out the store. So now, now he's, he's blocking my way. Look at that. That's Hi. illegal. That's Hi. holding me against my will. Hi. Not gonna have somebody hold me against dude, my you're will. Just, you're on me, dude. No, I'm dude, you here. cannot legally do that. You're standing on me. No, I'm trying to go around you, it and you keep matter. getting in front of me. I you're can't wait. To po I cannot wait to post this online. Post oh, it. Dude, TikTok's gonna blow up because of this one. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Dude, look at this guy. So first off, your no. guy cannot stop my way. He cannot get in my way, and he cannot physically. No, you don't. Get he cannot physically touch me. And I've been recording the whole, yes you did. You? Oh, I well, got it. You bounced into me, bro. Look at that, look at that. He cannot do that legally. That is against the law. All right, can you tell me your words right now, sir? Let's go this way. Yeah, follow me out. We always knew this was a potential. Karenicity has become an epidemic. It is spreading at record pace. And this is the most aggressive strain we know. This Karenicity runs deep. All right, really interesting. Um, I saw a guy, a male Karen, 
who obviously did not want the individual to leave, tried to um, stop his movement and said, no, 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 bro, you're bumping into me. Typical deflection, typical Karenicity. Everybody else is the problem. Everybody else is to blame. What kind of Walmart is this? All right, thoughts here. I mean, that guy needs to go on his break. And if, <laughs> right. he, if he doesn't have his Seriously. break coming up, give him an extra one. You know, I'm not saying that it's easy to be a Walmart employee. I know there's been a lot of trash. Usually the shoe is on the other foot. Usually yeah. it's the customer who is always wrong <laughs> ever since 2020 and everyone lost their damn minds. And we created this segment in the first place, right? right? But no, now you have a Walmart employee who's like, I don't even know what he's doing. He doesn't even use your words, my friend. <laughs> what do you think has been happening? Happening. Um, and it is sad that we live in a time where the customer is like, I can't wait to post this online, you know, and we're talking about it. And I understand that. Um, but it's just like, I wish there was just a little bit more, like you said earlier, humanity, yeah. a little bit more humanity. Hey, don't imagine everyone's a criminal and has stolen something like just because. Don't just pick a fight with someone because you're bored. You know, humanity like that. And so people don't have to whip out their phones and, you know, call your ass out. There you go. All right. Very sad story. Paramedics have now been charged with murder and rightfully so. Here's some of the video before the murder. Watch your noggin. I know it's cold. I know it's cold. Yep, keep going, keep going. Oh, negative. Come on, buddy. Now get up on there, man. Come on, get up on there, old bud. They can't get you there if you don't get on the cot. Get up on there, Earl. Get the bed on wheel. Get up there. All right, we're spinning them around. All right, put them up. Stand up. Stand up. Oh. All right, Earl, this is getting a little silly, man. See you. There we go. He gets in there. If he gets in there. He'll find his way to dead weight off of that thing. Oh, he's strapping my good. I have a lot more to this story. Let's put up a picture of the man who died because of these paramedics. Let's keep that picture up. He was facing a medical emergency. This happened in Springfield, Illinois. Earl Moore Jr. was strapped to a gurney improperly by Peggy Finley and Peter Cadigan. Following the event of the video, Mr. Moore was transported to a local hospital to the emergency room. He was pronounced dead. At the age of 35, according to his obituary, Moore was a manager at a local McDonald's for 18 years. Let's put up the pictures of those who are accused of his death. Peggy Finley, and then you have Peter Cadigan. They were charged with first degree murder for Mr. Moore. They are accused of improperly restraining Mr. Moore in preparation for an ambulance ride leading to his death. <laughs> I'm going to give you some significant background. The night of the incident, when all of this happened, police told WCIA Moore called 911 because he saw multiple people inside with guns. Body camera footage shows Springfield police officers arriving at Moore's apartment. A woman hysterically tells the officers, that the 35 year old is hallucinating, he's experiencing a mental health crisis. The woman then invites the officers inside of the apartment and directs them to his bedroom. 
Police eventually helped Mr. Moore out of his house unto an awaiting paramedic gurney. Finley and Cadigan then strap him into the gurney face down. Now remember this, that's completely a no-no. They strap him in face down and then cover him with blankets for the ambulance ride to the hospital. They smothered him to death. Please understand what happened here. They violated their own protocol. They decided not to value his life nor his suffering. They did not engage in a good faith effort to make sure his health was primary to them. They punished him. That's what it looks like to me. They smothered him. They strapped him in a way that would cause significant harm, if not death. And their training has already told them this. But you know what it can do? You know that strapping a person down, face down, it stops them from being able to talk. It stops them from being able to make noises, which probably was the aim of these paramedics. If you give them the benefit of the doubt, there's more. The Illinois State Police, Illinois State Police launched an investigation. An autopsy conducted on the 18th of December determined that the cause of death was what? Compressional and positional asphyxia due to prone face down restraint on a paramedic transportation cot by tighten straps across the back and lower body. You don't get more conclusive than that. The whole damn thing is the reason why he died. So let's go to the coroner. So the county coroner, Jim Alleman, all right, Jim Alleman ruled Morris' death to be a homicide. That simply means another person is responsible. The county state's attorney, Dan Wright, charged both of these paramedics with first degree murder. Under Illinois law, first degree murder is when a person kills an individual without lawful justification. He or she intends to kill or do great bodily harm or knows that such acts will cause death. These two paramedics were arrested and booked into the county jail on a $1 million bond. Wright said potential penalties include a range of 20 to 60 years in prison if Finley and Cadigan are convicted. Now, there's an important note in the statute for the state of Illinois. While willful intent is required for most crimes, it's not really required for this one. They don't have to possess the willful intent to kill. But if they do possess the knowledge that the action can kill, then the statute applies. Them being trained paramedics means they had the knowledge that their action of breaking the protocol could actually lead to death because that's what their training tells them. They decided to abandon that training, behave in a way that was adversarial to that training. And it led to the death of an individual just as their training suggests it could, the charge mm -hmm. fits. All right. So, um, yeah, it's amazing uh, the trouble you'll get into when you don't treat people like human beings. When right. you don't treat people the way you would treat your, you know, your mother, your son, your daughter, like like you just don't treat people like humans. It took them what? No time to just they could just turn him around. Just turn him around. What are you doing, Strappy? He's not dead. He, you, you know he's not dead, you were told he was hallucinating, he's having a mental health breakdown. And again, these are not cops, these are paramedics. So they absolutely deserve this charge. And again, it is just so terrifying and sad for the family members, you know, who know that this could have been so easily avoided. If they, I mean, again, you strap someone to a gurney, again, you're not talking about lying face down. You lie face down, you might not necessarily suffocate. You strap someone who is already I would like not conscious or barely conscious, you strap them down, yes, you will kill them. So and I I can't. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a extreme and here's the other thing. And I hate to say it, but it's worth noting. If the cops would have strapped him in, you would not see the same level of justice. Nope. If the cops would have strapped him in, you would see the police union, everybody else running to their defense saying, well, they were just trying to be helpful. It was right. just an accident, right. all right, um, suspended with pain. All right, we got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back, always good to be with you. We have a lot of comments, I will read as many as I can, kind of press for time. Mickey C, the silver haired dragon says, 
Did that manager then just throw the receipt on the floor? If so, what the F kind of customer service do they practice? Question mark. It's a good point. Um, C. Michael Henson, thank you, C. Michael, for that. We already can't completely trust the cops. You mean to tell me we can't trust the paramedics either? All right, and the press progressive. How can the paramedics be charged but not cops? This is just wrong on so many levels. Paramedics charged, but if the cops would have strapped them in, mm, I doubt it. I doubt they get charged with a crime, you're correct. All right, so the Republicans, the GOP, they want to create a dress code just for women because Women showing their arms, well, that's a no, no. Uh, let's put the picture up full mass here, really interesting. So members of the Missouri House of Representatives say the oath of office during the opening day of Missouri. Uh, they are now saying, hey, women need to wear different attire. It started 2023, started off Receiving scrutiny nationwide as they have debated the proper tire that women should wear. Women lawmakers, what they should wear while on the floor of the Capitol in Jefferson City. So let me just stop there. They're debating on what clothes a woman should wear on the floor of the Capitol. That's what they're debating, right? Now remember the same Republicans who are saying things like, well, we want to enforce a decent dress code on women and tell them what to wear. These are the same Republicans who said, if you mandate I wear a mask, that is a violation of my constitutional (laughs) rights. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute, you can literally tell a woman what layers and garments of clothing to wear inside of a government building at her job, elected by the people, you can tell her what to wear. But no one can tell you to wear a mask for the sake of public safety. One you see as a violation of your rights. The other you see as an expression of your privilege. There's more. The state of Missouri, which was under the nation's critical eye during the racial discrimination protest at the University of Missouri Columbia in 2015 to 2016. And the immediate aftermath of the Michael Brown killing in St. Louis has now garnered attention for their House of Representatives. Opening a debate that many female lawmakers have said is sexist, and I agree with them. In this particular case, the Missouri State Legislature is considering a ban on women's apparel that exposes bare arms. Wait a minute, I thought they liked to bear arms in a way. St. Louis Democrat uh, Pete Meredith roasted his Republican colleagues for even making this a topic of discussion. The caucus that done lost their damn minds. I put damn in myself (laughs) over the suggestion that they should wear a mask during a pandemic to respect the safety of others is now spending its time focusing on the fine details of what women have to wear and specifically how many layers must cover their arms to show respect in this chamber. You see, look at the hypocrisy. I mean, if it was any closer, it'll knock you out. So they have the right through legislation to regulate what a woman can wear. But there is no right of the government to regulate how people are protected in a health crisis. If you tell them they must wear a mask to go into a private building, that's a no, no. If you tell them they must wear a mask to go into a government building, Mm -hmm. oh, that's a no, no. But for them to say, well, but all the women who work here, they have to wear a certain attire. That's perfectly acceptable to them. You see, this was never about rule or law or constitution. This was always about control. So yeah. let's count the ways. Women, they cannot control what they wear. They cannot control their own medical functions or their medical issues. They don't have control over that. They do, white, old ass white men do, okay? Mm-hmm. But they can control 
Um, they, they cannot get a, a mask or cannot have a mask mandate because obviously that's a constitutional violation. Uh, so try to help me understand this at all if there's understanding to be had. You know, in a vacuum, Dr. Ritchie, uh, outside of, you know, let's forget that Missouri has completely banned abortions. So yeah. you're absolutely right, it's about control. In a vacuum, if we're like, maybe we should all wear a certain thing in the you know legislative chambers. I could buy that, right? I could understand, okay, you want everyone to wear long sleeves, but does that apply to men as well? Is there is this like a fancy restaurant where you must wear a jacket? Or is that just sort of assumed? But are there women legislators, female legislators writing laws that you must wear a suit? No. Um, so so like I'm like, I guess I understand like you wear a long sleeve shirt when you go into a, a church, you know, to kind of like not disrespect it, you know, or whatever. But again, it, it is all kind of part and parcel of an orthodox thinking of a Christian nationalist thinking, you know, and these are the same people who accuse the Muslim community because people wear hijab um, of being like retro retrograde. Meanwhile, they're like, we can't do the bare arms. Why? Right? So again, what I'm saying is we're not in a vacuum. This is not, you know, uh, this really is part of an effort to control women's bodies once again. And it just shows their own weakness of like, what does this mean to you? Are you attracted to the arms? Is it going to distract you? Because again, that is the same kind of orthodoxy we see, whether it's religion or whether it's functions of government. But now as they become one, it is all the same. And that expression of that again is control of women. You made a great point about the origin of this coming from some perverted Christian evangelical view. Let me remind those Christian evangelicals that it was Jesus who said, it is not what you put in the body. By extension, it's not what you put on the body that makes you spiritually unclean, but it is what comes out of the body. It is your action, your behavior that makes you unclean. He said that. All right, um, very, very sad story. A black teacher dies after a violent arrest by the LAPD. Here's the video. Please, just have a seat up against the wall there, yes, sir. okay? Have a seat against the wall. Sir, have a seat against the wall right, here. Everybody got to see me, sir. Have a seat I don't want to be in the black. Over here. I want people to see me. Sir, okay, you can Please, sit right sir, there sir. then. If you want to be seen, say right there. there. No, right there. Say right please. there if you want to have somebody see you. Please. Come here. Please. Please. Come here. Please. 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 Now, get down over there. Yes, yes, Turn over on your stomach right now. Yes. Turn over on your stomach right now. Yes. Turn over. Yes. Turn over. Yes, sir. Over on your stomach. Get over on your stomach. Hold on. Okay, okay, please. Please, sir, please don't do this. Please don't do this, sir. Please, help me, please. You know what? Help me, please. No, please help me. Help me, please. Please, 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 please. Keenan, relax. Keenan, relax. Help! Help! Stop him, I'm gonna tase you. Stop him, I'm gonna tase you. I'm gonna tase you. Stop it right now. Stop it right now. Turn over. Turn over. I'm gonna tase you. Turn over. I'm gonna tase you. Turn over. I'm gonna tase you. Yes. I can't. Watch. Watch your elbow, partner. You're trying to draw it for me. You're trying to draw it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm gonna tase you. Keenan died. I have more video. Here it is. Okay, stop it or I'm gonna tase you. Stop it or I'm gonna tase you. Stop resisting. Please, stop resisting. Please, please, please. I'm gonna tase him. I'm gonna tase him. They've been trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't resist. No. Stop it. Stop resisting. Okay. Stop it. Help. Stop Help, it. Help, please. Help. Do not I'm move. Not I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. Do not move. Okay. If not, I'm going to tase you again. 
Okay. Okay. Help me. Okay. Stop it. Stop it. Uh -uh. Stop it. Ah. 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 His hands, his arms were behind his back. Let's put up his picture. Mr. Keenan Anderson was definitely having a bad day. He was a father and also a high school English teacher. He was authentically afraid. Following the events that you just saw on that video, the school teacher, Mr. Keenan Anderson, 31 years of age, was then taken to the hospital. He was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest. The LAPD did not acknowledge Anderson's death until three days later. Detectives from LAPD's Force Investigation Division are currently investigating what led to this. Patrice Cullors, author and co-founder of Black Lives Matter said on Instagram that Anderson was her cousin, her cousin. She wrote on Monday, Keenan deserves to be alive right now. This child deserves to be raised by his father. Let me give you some background to what led to the video you saw. According to the LAPD, they arrived on the scene to find Mr. Anderson allegedly exhibiting erratic behavior. Now, once again, if you see that, what do you think? What do you assume? You assume there's a mental health crisis. This is a medical emergency. I don't need to taste this person. This is a medical emergency. I need to be patient. We got to subdue. We gotta be patient, we gotta wait on a professional to get here. We need to make sure this man is going to be okay. We don't need to treat him like a criminal, tase him over and over again, even when he's subdued. He displayed erratic behavior, he was having a tough day. When they arrived, he was exhibiting this erratic behavior according to their report and running in the middle of the street, the officers also said, that witnesses involved in the accident blamed Anderson for the car crash. Anderson reportedly cooperated and sat down on the street initially as additional officers arrived on the scene, but suddenly ran down Venice Boulevard as the LAPD gave chase. Mr. Anderson was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. A bad day does not mean your life should end. You see, this life could have been preserved. Now, will there, would there have been a penalty? Possibly, yes. But it's called due process, an opportunity to actually go through a bureaucratic process in order to establish your rights and exercise them. LAPD, they've killed many like this in recent times. LAPD officers have now killed at least three people so far in 2023. Data by the group mapping police violence shows 2022 was the deadliest year on record. For police violence, as law enforcement killed at least 1,176 people. Let's go to the chief, Chief Moore, currently LAPD. The buck stops with him. Now, I know people are going to push back on me, their sister, and they will say, well, he should have simply complied. <laughs> uh, keep in mind, this was an adverse police interaction. The question or the issue is not if the contact was warranted. But the response, yeah. if he is subdued, why are you still sending electricity through the man's body? Right. All right. No, and, and in the exact same place. I mean, this is the thing with the cops. They want you to comply and to comply for them means you must go completely limp until they kill you and you are limp. That is the bottom line. There is no in between, there is nothing you can do. When you're being restrained from your back, what are you supposed to do? Can you stand up like they always tell you to do? No. Can you roll over like they tell you to do? No. Can you, if you move your wrists, they think that that is resisting arrest when it is simply you moving your wrist because you're being handcuffed. So again, 
There is, they want you to be a lifeless body until you are a lifeless body. Mm. And it is unconscionable that already 12 days into this year, the LAPD have killed three people. That's one person every four days. At that rate, 91 people will lose their lives in this city at the hands of the police. And you know what? It's gonna be a lot more than that, sadly. So honestly, yep. I'm calling on not just obviously the, the chief of police, but Karen Bass, we have a new mayor. What's gonna change? She's a Democrat, we're waiting. We want to see that actual change. We need to pressure her from the left. I don't even think it's from the left. We need to pressure her from the side of humanity right. to rein in these cops and to start putting mental health workers on the streets. You don't need cops to respond to traffic incidents. Yeah, and whatever your conclusion may be about what happened, we can all conclude that he definitely should at least be alive. He posed no threat. No physical threat to anybody. When is deadly force allowable according to police protocol? When either the cop is in danger or somebody else is in immediate danger. It has to be right now danger. None of that was present, which means the prerequisites were not there in order for a person to die by the hands of the police. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We have a lot of show left. Let me read some of these amazing comments. Kind of press for time, we'll be quick. Mickey C, the Silverhead Dragon says, that's in the state. Are they also throwing tantrums about Jim Jordan not wearing the required suit jacket in the federal house? All right, a warlock says, "Oh my God, how medieval, revolutionary of IQs, rev- excuse me, revelatory of IQs, women can wear whatever the hell they please, just like the rest of us. It's called freedom and liberty. You un-American, uncivil, US Talibanites. Like your wordplay there. All right, uh, Mickey C says, oh my God, they're trying to George Floyd me. He knew what they were going to do and they did. Lying face down in the street with three cops on his back, one kneeling on his back. There was no reason to tase him much less hold the taser against his body for an extended period of time. And that is precisely what led to his death. It was that action right there that led to his death, all right, was not necessary at all. Okay, a school teacher, well, he thought he was going to arrange an encounter with a 14 year old child and the child's mother. Let's put his picture up full mass, he is now facing the penalty of his monstrous behavior. Kevin Hedrick, 37 years of age, thought he was talking to the mother of a 14 year old girl while allegedly attempting to arrange for a hookup with them both, okay? The married Ohio high school teacher, however, now faces federal charges because the mother turned out to be an undercover agent. Investigators tracked the school teacher of New Franklin on the app KIK, where he allegedly used the alias Mike Smith, <clears throat> according to an FBI affidavit in support of a criminal complaint. Hedrick thought he was communicating with the 28 year old mother of two underage girls, but he was actually speaking with a US Secret Service agent. The school teacher, a social studies teacher at Medina High School has been charged in Cleveland federal court with two counts of child pornography, receipt of visual depictions of minors engaged in sexual or sexually explicit conduct and enticing or coercing a minor to engage in prostitution or any criminal sexual activity. All right, remember high school teacher. He's also accused of using the school's district's internet services to access his account. The account he used to engage the mother or the secret agent in this case. According to court documents where investigators allegedly found hundreds of images of all of these pornographic material, all of this material depicting children between the ages of seven and 13. Remember, he's a high school teacher. Last October, the same teacher allegedly began messaging with the undercover secret service agent in the chat room. It was called Ohio Chastity 
chastity key holders. There he allegedly responded to a chat room post from an undercover agent who was posing as a mother of two daughters, age five and 14. When the mother asked the school teacher if he'd like to have sex with her and her teenage daughter, he allegedly responded in the affirmative. He also allegedly told the agent that he never slept with someone underage, but had relationships with two students after they finished high school, the affidavit alleges. The school teacher arranged to meet the agent in a hotel room, but he didn't show up. Following the conversations, agents obtained search warrants for his online accounts, including records from his Verizon telephone account and the Medina City School System's internet service provider, through which logins into this other account were found. The records state that this school teacher allegedly sent 54 media files to other users on this account between August and October 19th. And sent or received a total of 719, 719 images and 281 videos. Nearly all of which were sexually explicit in nature and largely depicted girls that an investigator estimated were between ages 13 and 19. When later questioned about this message or these messages, the school teacher allegedly said he had, and I quote, fantasized about having sexual relations with the woman and her 14 year old daughter, but qualified the chats as only descriptive fantasies, the affidavit says. Let's go to the superintendent. This is the city school superintendent, Aaron Sable. Mr. Sable emailed parents that this situation did not directly impact current city school district students or staff. That's what he said in an email. Um, Did you do an investigation, superintendent? What are the results of your conclusive investigation? Because I'm sure there was an, an exhaustive investigation first before you concluded this, right? The lawyer of the school teacher, Donald J. Malarick, Told people that the school teacher, Mr. Hendrick, resigned as of January 6th and will, and I quote, never teach again. The attorney also stated that his client is currently being held in Youngstown, Ohio Federal Detention Facility, awaiting a January 13th hearing. Now I have a few problems with this, okay? Number one, number one, the superintendent coming out and just saying, hey guys, nothing to see here is a problem. That is a problem. Because without an exhaustive investigation, you do not know. And then also obviously, how was this able to be done at the school on their servers without detection? Their devices, there's programs we implement for this very reason. All right, thoughts here. No, I mean, get this man as far away from children as possible. I'm glad that he resigned, but again, there needs to be follow up. And like our teachers, look, look. first of all, there's a difference between the sharing of images, which is a crime, uh, and the chatting, which which was about to be a crime, and actually committing, you know, uh, being a pedophile, right? An actual pet. But so I just wanna like, I'm glad that he didn't cross that line, but he needs to face the charges for distributing pornography and also seek major mental health care and a therapist. I guess the last thing I'm gonna say is teachers need to be better vetted and also given trainings. You're in a position of power. You cannot have a romantic relationship with one of your students. Like, hello, can we like just. Come on, yeah. give them free marital counseling. I don't know, I know I'm gonna get backlash for that, but just. Yeah, but the, the school having it on their, on their server means he accessed it at school. He was engaged in right. this kind of conduct at the actual institution. The fact that the institution, they don't have the software to detect this is problematic. Every school sure. I've worked at, they have this kind of software in order to detect things like this because, well, children are on the campus. That's why they have the software. All right, Charlie Kirk goes full racist. Here it is. What is causing this? Is it some sort of a 
cyber attack? Is it a hack? It could be. The government is saying it's not. But it could be the Chinese Communist Party retaliating against the House Republicans that have just set up a subcommittee that is expressly anti-CCP. And I don't think that's the case. Instead, what is more likely is who's in charge? Well, the person who's in charge of the Department of Transportation was picked solely because of his sexual preference. So when you hire personnel based on lifestyle or melanin content, you should not be shocked. No one should be surprised when things start to fall apart. And if I were to give some feedback to conservatives of all colors, but in particular white conservatives, the amount of white guilt that conservatives have, sometimes Christians, about this issue gives you Pete Buttigieg. I'm reading a book on how you need to slow down your life. And he says one of the ways that you might struggle to unhurry your life is if you're a black person, that you're privileged to be able to slow down your life. And I say, what? He believes that white people have some sort of institutional privilege. And it is a lie. It's not just a little lie. It is a racist, bigoted lie. And because he lives in Portland, he is surrounded by so many white people that are afraid to speak truth about race that, hey, it's actually not about skin color. Maybe it's about fatherlessness or some very serious issues with black culture. Can't say that. No, you just got to blame the white guy. Whoa, Charlie, come on. I got some information for you if you bother to research it. So what was he talking about? He was talking about the FAA and the period of time when all flights were basically downed. Hey, something's wrong with the computer system. We got to shut down air traffic for safety, right? So he took that incident and somehow decided to blame black culture mm -hmm. for the downing of planes. For a safety reason. Now, okay, uh, the cascading collapse of US air travel on Wednesday caused by an air safety systems failure was attributed to human error. A senior official with knowledge of the matter told ABC News, an engineer conducting routine maintenance replaced one file with another, resulting in the breakdown, the official said. Now, remember, uh, white men have made a lot of blunders being leaders of this country and leaders of other corporations, etc. Never are all white people blamed for the blunders of this white man or the other. Uh, and here's the other issue, he said fatherless. Like what the hell does that have to do with anything? But Charlie, I'm gonna read something to you that was released by the Centers for Disease Control and also Pew Research did a separate study found the same thing. According to those studies, black fathers, are most involved with their children in comparison to every other demographic, Hispanic, white, etc. Now that may shock many people who just heard me read that statement. We are so ready to accept a negative narrative about black culture than a positive one. According to the CDC, I will say it again, and you can look it up. According to the CDC, black fathers actually spend more time with their children than any other demographic in America. Also echoed by Pew Research. Yeah, there you go. And he was the one making it about race. Why did you make yep. an FAA thing about race? Uh, and I love the far fatherlessness thing. Um, yeah, how about stop incarcerating, over incarcerating black men? And then we can actually have an honest conversation about who's a father and who's not. It's just insane. And there you go. The evidence is the CDC has it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, Charlie Kirk. All right, always a pleasure having you on the show. Tell people I think follow you, check out your work. Follow at Franny Fio, uh, all the things, listen to the Bituation Room podcast. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Richie, you're wonderful. Always a pleasure. All right, remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable. Welcome to Indisputable, I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today, but what do we do on this show? We tell the truth, you know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here, congratulations on the new show. And I gotta let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. People still need healthcare, so I won't stop. People still need criminal justice systems reform throughout this country, so I won't stop, and you won't stop either.